Yep. Well, here it is. Oh, yeah. Got some couchage. Yep. It's really not in that bad a shape. Well, can't really see it much, but here it is, 1967 Rebel SST convertible. This car is very special because it was actually gifted to Doug, one of the sons of the original owner of this dealership, but he was nine and that was in 1979. 43 years this car has been sitting here. He's never even driven it. I can't really see what's going on. First thing we gotta do is just get it out of here. And that means, you know, we gotta move some stuff. All right, here we go. Well, here we are, we've finally reached the Rebel. We've got everything moved out of the way. Surprisingly, three of the four tires are holding air pretty well. That's those old bias pies. Uh, one's got a slow leak, but we'll deal with that later. Right now, we're gonna hook a strap on, get this onto the silver rattle or rental and try to just drag this thing out of here. I did push it neutral or tried. The wheels are unfortunately locked up. So I'm hoping in the distance of the shed, they break free. Probably. Come on, wheel, break free, break free. Right now, break free. Do it, do the thing. There you go, it's trying. Shut her down. It's outside for the first time in 43 years, this car is getting some daylight. It needs a little love. Let's walk around this thing, drink it up a little bit, see what we're working with here. Right away, I noticed the 343 badge on this side, but on this side, it has the original 290. The Rebels actually had eight different engine variations ranging in displacement all the way up to the 390. And if you got the machine, the legendary machine in 1970 with the iconic red, white, and blue paint, you got the high output 390, about 345 horse. This one has a 343 in it right there. Good engine, pretty quick little devils. And it looks like we got completage. I mean, everything appears to be there. Of course, every hose, lightning hose, everything is pretty well rotted out of it, but fill make it happeners here, water whirler, charging whirler. Body-wise, it's been wrecked back here. I see some Bondo back there. Quarter panel still looks pretty straight though. Door opens and closes, some more primer in the jam. It's definitely been painted. This isn't the original paint or color, it's close. This side, a little bit more body damage. Someone was cleaning ditches with it. This actually looks like the door might've come open too far and got into the fender there as well. More evidence of primer repaint here, but the sills are solid. There's not really carpet in it. And I can tell you the floors are pretty solid. This quarter looks pretty good. Rear's in great shape. Bumper is a little, eh, you know, here and there. Again, this is the SST, which is the top of the line trim model. Didn't get any better than this. Now the convertibles only came in 67 and 68, 69, they didn't make them. Convertible top, probably leaks. There it goes. Yes. It's a runner. Oh, look at the smoke. <laughs> Look at this. That's old fuel from the tank. It's gonna sit here and idle. That's fuel from 1979. Well, the car runs, but a guy's not going anywhere with this wheel locked up like this. So what I'm gonna do is call in a tow truck, hook it onto that thing, swing by the old car wash, blow this off, see what we got, and then take it right to a shop on the property here where I can start digging into this thing. So this is a 10 ton hydraulic, it's actually a gear puller. Robbie lent it to me. I guess it works for drums pretty decently. I got the other side off. If you remember on episode one, the Mustang, doing it manually with pry bars and sledgehammers, well, it's an easy way to basically burn up a whole day. This gets them off pretty decently. It does destroy the drums though, but we have some new ones, so they are stuck. That's off now. So while these old poverty caps are both neat and in excellent condition, all four of them are, doesn't really give me that muscle car vibe. So we gotta change it up. We need new tires anyway. So we're gonna go with this. It's 
it's good vinegar. So we're not able to get our hands on a new fuel tank for the Rebel here, but that's okay. There's some ways to clean these good or ish enough to just get back on the road. Most commonly people use nuts, bolts, things with sharp edges, even some clean sharp rocks will do the trick. However, I've done this about 948 times and I can tell you those are very difficult to get back out. I have found marbles to be ideal. They're much easier to get out. However, you have to work at it a little bit harder to get it clean. As far as chemicals go, we're just using some good old white vinegar and then some CLR, calcium, lime, and rust, all in which we have in here. So we're just gonna dump all this stuff in here, add all these marbles, and then spend probably about an hour shaking this tank around, trying to knock free all the deposits, dump it out, put her back in. A little for me. Tank. Being that all of this basically goes down your household drain, it's uh, environmentally safe and friendly. So once we shake all this up, we can just, you know, go dump it on some weeds or pretty much anywhere on the property. We don't have to worry about disposing of it. And basically do this until your back locks up. See that particles coming out? Well, the Rebel has been putting up a fight so far. As soon as a guy fixes something, something else fails, but it was sitting in a shed for 43 years, so I kind of got to give it a pass. So far, we've put new rear brakes and front brakes, including a master cylinder and some brake lines, a new four-barrel carburetor, new ignition system, a freeze plug, a water pump, a whole bunch of other stuff, but there's still work to do. The top's not done, interior's not done, and I still have some work to do under here. While I'm waiting for the guys to get here with more top material, I need to replace this crank pulley. It's rusted and rotting and just throwing shrapnel everywhere. Once I get it out, I'll show you how bad it actually is. <laughs> There's the issue. It's not supposed to be Wi-Fi in there. It was adjusting its own belt size and this shrapnel was just flinging out at us. Luckily, there's like 7,912 AMCs over here. So we'll grab another one, throw it right back on. This one's completely rebuilt. By that, I mean, it's, it's, you know. Here we go, brand new crankshaft, forged. Starts good. All the weird squeaking and ticking and rust pieces flying and all of that is resolved. After we put the air cleaner on, we can shut this hood one last time. Done. Well, I've got the pulley swapped under the hood. Mechanically, I think we're sound. Engine runs great, transmission seems to be shifting, brakes are there, we've got fuel capacity. Dan and the other guys are on it. They're doing the top right now and the interior. If all goes well, tomorrow we're setting sail for the coast. Shortest route to the ocean from here is about 100 miles. First time on the highway in 43 years. Power steering actually is really good with this car. Temp gauge does work, that's good. Fuel gauge works, which is a huge plus. Nothing else. Whoa, radio's back. I'll be damned. But if the shadow of the goal line, if the bounce will put a touchdown. Mouse of sandal! I think we're going about 50 right now, and it feels like 106. It feels... Pretty solid on the road, actually. Other than the severe vibration in the front, ride's great, you know? My bullet's just whipping today. It is a beautiful day out, though. Guy's gotta take her easy for a few miles, then we'll pick up the speed here. Let all the bearings and seals and gaskets and doodabs and dippies come back around. Then we'll really get into that AMC power. 